Hey everyone, it's Brian with some more Bomber Beta. Today I'm going to tell you the fastest way I know of to become a better climber. If you guys like climbing hard stuff, consider subscribing because that's all I talk about. So most of the time when we're climbing, we have two points of our body which are in contact with the rock. One is our fingertips and the other is the edge of our shoes. Now, when we're talking about getting better at climbing fast, I'm talking about things that you can do today that might make you a better climber tomorrow. You know, I think hangboarding, core workouts, getting a lot of mileage in is a really good way to get better at climbing in the long term. But in the short term, getting the right pair of shoes and getting your skin care taken care of is going to be the fastest and most efficient way to get better at climbing in the near future. If you want to learn more about rock climbing shoes, go ahead and check out the playlist up here. But for this video, we're going to be talking about skincare. This is a little trickier and it requires a little bit of work. You just can't buy a new pair of shoes and be off to the races. This one we have to take care of our skin and we have to be very conscious of what good skin is. So that poses the question of what is good skin? What you want to look for is having very cool hands that are not sweating at all. So when you put your hand into your chalk bag, you should be able to look at your fingertips and not see any chalk missing from there. If it is, that means that you're sweating a little bit and that can lead to some negative side effects when you're climbing. So when your hands start sweating when you're climbing, you're going to end up slipping a little bit and it's going to not feel quite right. You know, you'll hit a sloper and you'll slide a little bit before you catch. When you have really good skin, you'll hit it and you'll stick and you'll be perfectly good right there. So a few things that'll make your skin start to sweat and get a little bit greasy will be either it's really hot or your skin is really low or you just naturally have really sweaty skin. So there's a few things that we can do to kind of counteract that. But one thing we need to look at is climbing conditions. Now, the colder it is, typically the less you're going to sweat and the harder your skin is going to get. Now, this isn't a one size fits all type of thing, but if you're climbing in very hot conditions, your skin is probably never going to be in the optimal state. So take that into consideration and whenever you can try to climb in cooler conditions, aim for the colder, shadier areas. Now we're gonna talk about some rock climbing skincare products. So the first thing I wanna talk about is salves and lotion. So for example here, I have this uh, Climb On. This is a climbing salve. I've used this stuff for a really long time. I like it a lot. It, it's kind of like a brick of lotion, really hard lotion, kind of like almost like a soap texture to it but it works really well in hydrating your skin and you can use this uh, at night. I like to use it at night, a day before I'm climbing. And then we have this Rhino Skin Repair. So this stuff is more like a lotion. It comes off and it's like a little pump thing. And that's kind of goes on like, you know, what you would think of as very watery and it absorbs in really quickly. So why would you use one of these climbing lotions or salves? The reason you would use these is your skin is extremely dry and it's starting to crack. Um, or you have really low skin and you're looking to make your skin a little healthier and hopefully grow back a little faster. Now I don't know if that is scientifically proven at all, but in my experience using this when my skin is really low helps out a little bit and it gives you a chance of climbing maybe a day earlier than you would be if you didn't. So if you guys have a favorite climbing salve or lotion that you like to use, go ahead and leave it down in the uh, comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys like to use and maybe I'll pick some up myself and try it out. The second thing I want to talk about is antiperspirant. Uh, here's something from Rhinoskin. It's called Rhinoskin Performance. It works similarly to antihydral, which you can get Actually, I've found it on Amazon. Typically, you had to order it from Germany, but that stuff is a very aggressive antiperspirant. This is more of a mild one, but I think they have uh, a more aggressive one that you guys can find. Now, the reason you'd want to use an antiperspirant is if your hands are very sweaty. So I actually went out climbing yesterday, and I, it was probably 45 degrees out, 45 degrees Fahrenheit, and very dry condition 
a little bit of a breeze, no sun, and my tips were still sweaty. And I was very frustrated. So I've I used this stuff last night and my tips feel way drier than they did. Um, now, I don't know if this stuff is 100% safe to use long term. If you can see, that says uh, not approved by the FDA. The FDA is the Food and Drug Administration here in the United States. So um, I'm gonna let you guys decide if that seems safe for you, but it will most likely stop your hands from sweating. Uh, and if you suffer from having sweaty hands, greasy feeling hands, uh, it might be something worth looking into to try to give yourself that little edge. Not only will dry hands help your skin last longer, but it'll also give you better friction. So go ahead and check that out. So another thing that you need to add to your rock climbing skincare kit will be an emery board. Now this is pretty much just a nail file, but if you get an emery board, which I'll leave a link down in the description below, you can actually wash these out and use them over and over again. So I would take this and I would use it on the sides of my fingers like that and in those creases right there. So that can actually help because typically we're going to lose skin in this region right here. So you'll have a buildup around the edges and right on the crack. So this is a good thing to have with you. You probably already own one. You might want to pick some more up. I think Climb Skin actually makes one specific for rock climbers. I'll leave a link in that below, but I have not used it, but it has good reviews. Uh, people have said good things, so go ahead and check that out as well. This isn't exactly uh, climbing skincare, but having a nail clipper so you can clip anything off or your cuticles can just help with some pain and potentially broken nail or pulled back nail which will ultimately probably stop you from climbing for a couple days because it'll just hurt too much. So make sure to clip those nails back a comfortable amount. Don't go too aggressive. Um, and also probably do it when you have a rest day coming up because sometimes it can be a little sensitive and uncomfortable to climb the day after you clip your nails. So something that every climber should have in their climbing bag is a roll of tape. Um, this can be really useful as a preventative measure if you have an extremely sharp hold uh, especially on some of these lower uh, parts of your finger um, that would be a good time to wrap that up a little bit and prevent it from splitting or uh, creating a flapper um, you can use it on your tips but it typically is very uncomfortable uh, not uncomfortable as it hurts but it just doesn't feel right and you'll probably not be able to climb at your limit. But if you're trying to climb just for volume and your skin is super low, you could tape your tips up and you could climb on jugular holds and it would be perfectly fine. Um, but just do be aware that the friction is usually very bad and the sensitivity goes completely away when you wrap up your tips. So now that we know how to get good skin, we need to look at what happens when your skin fails. Now, when we're climbing, we put extreme loads under our skin, so it is not uncommon for us to get splits, cracks, and flappers. So first, we're gonna look into flappers. Now, if you get a flapper, that's typically gonna happen either in this region or in this region. Hopefully, it's not the fingertip because that's gonna be really gnarly. Um, but if it's somewhere down here, what I would suggest doing is taking either your nail clippers like this or a pair of scissors uh, and, and clipping the dead skin off. And then if you can deal with it, some flappers aren't that bad. Some of them are just bleeding profusely. Um, but if it's one of the less aggressive ones, you might be able to wrap it with tape. Um, if not, you're gonna wanna rest for enough time that you're not going to feel pain when you press on it. It's just an unfortunate thing. And a lot of people will say to super glue it. I have never found that to be very useful, but you might find that's different. I just feel like adding uh, a cyanoacrylate to your skin is probably not good for the long term. But if you guys want to try it, go ahead. So another thing that happens when your skin starts to get too dry is that you can end up getting a split. And that's going to happen in this area right here probably, probably on the middle finger. Could happen also on the pointer finger, typically. 
that is actually not cut. That's actually your skin is split apart at that crease. And to deal with that, you have to be pretty proactive about it. So one thing that you can do to make sure it doesn't happen is to file that down so it doesn't build up too much on the sides and then ultimately splitting open when you do a crimp like that. It's gonna put a lot of tension on that skin. So keeping that skin uh, from building up and callousing is going to be very crucial. Now, if it's already happened, I would again file down any of the excess on the sides. And then what I like to do is I like to take some of this climb on and really get a good amount on the crease right before bed. And then I'm gonna take a little piece of tape or a band-aid and wrap just once real light, but just to kind of keep it from rubbing off in your sleep. And uh, doing that until it starts to heal, I really like that because I feel like it kind of makes the skin a little softer and willing to go back together rather than being dried and cracked and always opening back up. Now, if you've just kind of gone too far in your climbing and just overdid it, slipped on some slopers, uh, stuff like that, and your skin is so low that you're starting to see some blood seep out of your tips, it's time to take a couple rest days. Ideally, you don't want to get to this point. You want to be conscious of your skin wearing out too fast. A lot of the times, uh, newer climbers will just keep going when they probably should drop and um, kind of reassess what they're doing before they totally wear out their skin. Now, um, if you are at that point, you can, like I said before, try to tape your tips up, but it's not going to be ideal. Um, you're probably better off resting, and if you've gone so far to completely wear your skin off, your body probably could use some rest. So take that opportunity and get a couple rest days in and come back stronger and make sure not to let it happen again because it takes a long time to get your skin nice and thick and built up. So the best way to not get low skin is to catch it early and not overdo it. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video about my personal skincare routine and a little bit about what I know. I'm not a dermatologist nor an expert on skincare. I'm just kind of sharing what I know and I hope you guys found it useful. If there's anything you guys would like to add, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.